User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at Uketastic.com. Hi, it's Mike with Uketastic. I'm here at SCNA 2013, and right now I'm sitting down with Katrina Owen, who's going to be giving a talk called Here Be Dragons. The reason I say here we are uh, going to be is because you're the last talk of the session, so I might not get a chance to interview afterwards. But uh, uh, thank you for taking the time to sit down with me. I know you probably have a lot, a lot on your mind as you're getting ready to talk today at the end of the conference. Oh, thanks. That's fine. Sure. And uh, so here be dragons. What, what does that mean? It's a reference back to the old map making days where the explorers. Uh, would draw dragons in the parts of the maps where they didn't know what was there. Mm -hmm. And my talk is a code review, so it's um, it's a metaphor for all of the things that you don't know are in the code and that can be quite scary. So what code are you, is it some arbitrary code or is it something that you've it's, worked on? In uh, it's an anonymized version of some production code that I ran into a couple of years ago. Okay. Uh, there, was, it, there was a bug. Does the person who wrote it, or the team that wrote it, know that you're doing this, or? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, hence anonymized. Oh, okay, um, but I mean, but I mean, have they been clued in that, like, was this? Well, I, I guess where I'm coming from is, is did the original code review come from something you worked with them on? And it, it's actually kind of awkward. So okay. they weren't really on the team uh, when when the bug was reported. I. Uh, I started looking at the code, and it was it was kind of it was kind of crazy. And so I asked, I before I figured out what code was involved in this feature, I didn't mm -hmm. really know who had written it. So I asked around the table. I was working in a very small yeah. company. I asked around the table who who remembers who 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 wrote this stuff. Yeah. Nobody recalled writing it. Nobody yeah. recalled writing it. Uh, and so when I finally figured out with Git blame mm -hmm. or figured out what code was involved and then did get blame on that. I did find out who it was. Yeah. And they just had no recollection of writing it, which is fine. Yeah. Um, it well, yeah, it's gonna happen over yeah. hundreds or thousands of lines of code in yeah. over years. So you, and they weren't really on the project normally, so it was just this side thing that they had done. And the, so the best though is when you check get blame and it was you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was my previous talk. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, Who's the oh yeah, no that idiot yeah. was me. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and that's also why you got to be careful when you're like, who's the idiot who wrote this code and the person's like drinking a coffee next to you? <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's a reminder to be kind. But, uh, so, so what, what is it in the code that, that made this particular code something that you wanted to create a talk around? The, the code is, is so bad that it has a punchline, <laughs> essentially. And, and so I actually really only use the code as an excuse to talk about some of the people issues around having terrible code, or code at all. Um, we were talking about who's this idiot who wrote the code. Mm -hmm. um, we have a tendency, I talk a little bit about the fundamental attribution error, where we tend to, we, we don't, we're not aware of the pressures, the, the pressures that that um, that were in play when some code was written, mm -hmm. we can't see them from where we stand. Right. And so we tend to assume, because we can't see those pressures, that the reason the code is terrible is that the person who wrote them is stupid. Right. And if we knew the pressures, we would tend to assume that the reason they wrote it was some temporary thing that is passing, and if they had had better a better situation, they would write much better code. So, so kind of like that, uh, that often misattributed uh, quote about don't assume malice when you can explain with ignorance. In our case, it's don't explain stupidity with just not knowing the con constraints that they were under at that time. Right. You know, they could have been for anything from being just new to the language to deadlines. Being... Very very tired because you've been up three days hacking. Maybe your cat died. I mean, there are any reasons. Right. Um, that could be that you are not at your best. So, like a, a few months or a year or so ago, there was kind of a kerfluffle on the Twitters about um, Corey Haynes and made some comments that blasted a uh, developer for uh, who contributed was new to contributing to open source, and um, you know was it was it was something that eventually he came back and apologized because it was a little bit harsh. You know, and, and it kind of gave some people pause to think about um, 
being a little bit more kind and, and try not to criticize a code so harshly that it reflects on the person. Is that something that, that you're trying to walk that line with your talk? A little bit. I do tear this code apart. Okay. But it makes a good story. Oh, so okay. it's kind of worth it. In real life, I try to be very... Uh, both kind and realistic about code reviews. Mm -hmm. I try to look at the code that's there and say, what I'm seeing is this duplication, or I don't understand the name that you used, um, and, and try to ask questions about their context. What are the trade-offs mm -hmm. that you considered? Why, why did you go in this direction? Did you consider this other direction? Sometimes they're like, oh yeah, it didn't occur to me. I didn't right. even know there was a method called max by on enumerable. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's awesome. Now I learned something new. And other times it's like, well, yeah, I was thinking about this. And I'm like, well, gee, that's a really good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's some constraint that you didn't even. Yeah. Because sometimes when we look at the code, we might just be wrong. Oh yeah, I'm a wrong. I'm I'm not very smart. <laughs> I'm wrong a lot of the time. Well, I, it's it's a great spectrum of intelligence, and you know we we all live in somewhere in that, and it's and it flexes though. Sometimes we're we're brilliant, and we can um, we can solve any problems. And other days, like you said, cat died, and you're just down. And it's yeah. it, it's it's even something that when you approach a code review, I think we need to think about is okay this person was there and it isn't like this fixed point in intelligence for them that's also a fixed point in intelligence and awareness for right. us now and that's why those conversations are yeah. wonderful to have um, and that's also why we have these conversations so yeah. we can we can think about um, you know why we're doing what we do here in, in, in these uh, and I'm just kind of searching for for what my point is. Okay, uh, I can I'll tell think you about it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so, so like a review. Tell me what my <laughs> point is. So I think the I think the point is that um, stay aware of the fact that there is context. Mm -hmm. Don't be very quick to judge and and let that um, let that inform the questions that you mm -hmm. ask rather than the judgments that you make. Okay, great. So so think about context. Become context aware. We're not uh, we're not a context free grammar. Um, so okay. I'm, I am doing terrible right now at the end of this interview, but that is okay. That's what we do this for. When I get my review of the interview, it'll get torn apart. So that's all right. But you can Katrina, it though, right? You, well, no, <laughs> no. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let this ride because that's the whole point of these, these conversations. And, and again, I just say much like um, where you're looking at the code and you're trying to think about the humanity of the person who wrote the code, so not getting back on track. Thinking about that it was a human who wrote the code and that it's not just a bunch of random lines that, you know, that somebody tried, that somebody was, you know, when they did this, they were probably trying really hard to do the right thing. And um, one of the points of, of these interviews is to take people that might otherwise only be known through Twitter, blogs, online personas, where they can kind of become a little distant and and become anonymized so that way they can be kind of even a little bit abused because people forget that they're humans, uh, you know, that they're out there, they're trying to share a message or they're trying to share something or they're doing some work or maybe they're even unintentionally out there because they created something and now it got popular. Um, to take those interviews, take these interviews and take those people, excuse me, through these interviews and um, share them and say these people are human and, and we have these conversations and we make mistakes and we fumble and we you know in, in, in the course of a conversation maybe get uh, drifted off of, off of an original point but these are not intended to be um, super journalistic uh, right. interviews these are casual conversations with yeah. people much like you know you're looking at these these, these lines of codes and turning them into conversations yeah. and, and, and talks yeah yeah so the reason I the reason I wanted to do a talk well first of all the code was just funny but second of all this point of um, of being aware of, of the questions that you can ask rather than the judgments mm -hmm. that you make is that I'm very bad at empathy and this is something that comes up a lot it's been coming up over and over and over again how you have to empathize with your fellow developers and I don't even know what it means and people try to explain it to me and I'm unable to conceive of what it means when they explain it in terms of empathy. But when you explain it in terms of 
asking about the pressures rather mm -hmm. than making judgments about um, b about who they are and what they know, I'm able to do that. I can I can say, okay, I can I know how to ask questions. Right. I can do that instead of just making a judgment, even though I'm pretty quick to judge. Well, I mean, when we're looking at the line of code and we're like this, uh, who wrote this, and you're just hating on them because you're like, now you have to move a ton of things around and it's just complicates what's in your head. But when you step up and you get your cup of coffee, you can think about, you know, sometimes it, take a breath and be like, I'm tired, maybe they were tired too. Yeah. And I think that makes it a little bit easier, I yeah. think, to, to realize that humans can feel that we're all humans here doing this together. I mean, if I can be frustrated, I bet they were frustrated writing this code. Right. And you can feel that frustration yeah. coming out. You can feel that somebody added a 10th filter line. I know because I've personally done that on the code that they were trying to diagnose why it wasn't behaving right. the way they expected because there was some external force right. and, and apply. And again, that comes down to context. Yeah. So, well, thank you very much for taking the time to stay here. I really much. appreciate it. Yeah. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.